yourself in your social circle. Loneliness gives bad counsel. People who isolate themselves from family, work, and their community become disturbed. Fleeing the world hinders the use of reason, leading to a distorted view in relation to people and events. Humans are social beings meant to help and learn from one another. It is in the day-to-day -day struggles and the course of human activities that the values must be developed and improved are assessed. So no isolation? <laughs> no isolation, actually we are social beings, right? Okay, yeah, for good and for bad. Right. Yeah, if you want to say a few words for us to get started, I'll pray. Sure. Feel? God, thank you for this beautiful time here with our friends and our family and teaching us to love each other and be humble and be better and learn from our mistakes every day. Um, grateful for this time and for the spiritual center and having this ability to be here on the weekends and during the week to learn um, about how to live with one another and just love each other more and more. Thank you for this time here and bless this meeting today and Anisio and everyone here. Thank you. Thank you, JR. Thank you very yeah, much. Please. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, so we're going to dissect. Ah, too strong of a word. We're going to try to understand a little bit of a passage of the gospel right? Um, a very short one is actually, uh, it's in the Bible. It's off, off, of course, you know, if you guys are familiar with Spiritism, there's a book called The Gospel According to Spiritism, where uh, Kardec explained the passages of the Gospel more detail with a more, you know, modern language. And um, instead of using, we don't use directly, although the Gospel is completely fine, read the Bible, the, the New Testament, right? Um, all the teachings are there, but there, the language is a little bit more complicated because it's ancient, right? It has been you know, written like 2000, I don't know, a thousand years ago. And uh, so the, the decision Kardec made was, look, let's, let's publish a book that has the same teachings, nothing new, right? Different from what Jesus told us, taught us, but with a little bit more explanation. And we're going to get one of those passages, right? And if you're familiar with the gospel, there's a passage in Matthew, like 15, um, 1 to 20, where um, the Pharisees came to Jesus, right? And, and, and those are, what is, what is the gospel? The gospel are simple, mundane, day-to-day -day things that happen in the life of Jesus that we try to struck the teachings, right? Because he, he, he was not, people think that Jesus was a, a, might have been a teacher or something. No, he was not. He was living life like we live our lives, right? Dealing with problems the same way we do, talking to people, trying to get things done, right? Uh, healing and, and touching and being interacting with people all the time. So this was life, right? It was not like academia. It's not like a university where we sit down. Yeah, he, he, he spoke a few moments, right? But most of the teachings are just the, the heat of the moment, the interaction with people right? And what he told them, right? And this was one of those cases. So Jesus is actually with his apostles and uh, the Pharisees and some teachers of the law. Who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees were kind of the orthodox people, the, the religious people, very religious people, right? People that follow the religion to the law, right? Every detail, like, like right? And, uh, and these people came to talk to Jesus and they complained because there was something bothering them, right? And what was the problem? The 
the, the disciples and most people in Jesus' circles, when they were about to have a meal, right, eat, right, they did not necessarily wash their hands. And most of you would say, oh, that's gross. Well, um, for us, with the hygiene we have in, in, in this century, water is very common for us, right? Everybody has running water, right? Everybody's a few, anywhere you are in your home, you are just a few feet away from a sink, and washing your hands is just something we don't even think about. It's something we do, right? It's kind of normal, right? We try to convince some kids to do that, so, so sometimes a little harder. But we, we try to get used to that. Just wash our hands. But, but this is 2,000 years ago. Who had running water in their houses? No one. Or it might be if you were in a palace or something, you know, somebody's just dumping water in a, in a bucket somewhere. But otherwise, there was, there was no water, running water, right? So washing your hands was a task. You need to have clean water. You had to have somebody bring the water to wherever you were. So it was not practical. It was something that you need slaves or some sort of servants to make it happen. And the Pharisees taught about the washing hands as a ceremony, as something religious with a meaning. So they washed their hands as, as part of the cleansing. And then Jesus, taught, what Jesus when, they, when they came with that, and that was a big deal for them, Jesus got the opportunity to teach something, right? We were like, look, you claim that this is the law of God. Right? And then Jesus pointed to him like this, a, a contradiction in their laws. Told to him, okay, okay. It was a big deal at the time, uh, which didn't change much today. But there was a part of the law the Pharisees created that you would make, you could make all your money, the possessions you have, as God's money. You would still be yours, but could claim it to be God's money. And then you could only spend with God's things, God things, which were a lot of stuff, by the way. It had to do with the temple, right? And people back then start using that kind of claiming to not take responsibility of their families, especially their parents. Because back then, you're supposed to take care of your parents, right? Your parents took care of you. If you go to the Ten Commandments, by the way, right? Honor your father and your mother. And back then, there was no insurance, there was no, uh, you know, you couldn't get retirement, right? So retirement, your, fa your family would take care of you. When you got older, right, the only thing you had for you was your family taking care of you. And that was part of the law, the Mosaic Law, Ten Commandments. And people, uh, the Pharisees were using the, this loophole where you declare your money, possession of God, to not take care of their families, to, some, to not fulfill it. And this was a problem back then, right? And Jesus brought that and told us, but you don't take care. You complain about the washing hands part of the law, but yet you ignore the taking care of your father, your mother, your family, claiming that the money is God. That's what's in the gospel. Point of the contradiction. And then comes the teaching. What, what makes a man dirty or impure is not what you eat, but not what comes into your mouth but what comes out, which means what you say, what you do, what you talk. That's what compromises your spirituality, not what you eat. And that, what's the point here? What is trying to tr bring it to today? Is, is this up to date? Is this something that matters for us today? Absolutely, because it's the same thing we have right now. How many of us think that spirituality in many cases, is just performing a ritual, doing something, like going to church. Like, you know, hopefully uh, we understand it. We are here to, uh, today to talk about spirituality. But the fact that we are here, not necessarily get us into a spiritual mindset. This is a place that, in many others, many temples right now, they, you know, that they, uh, they should provide us the, the tools, the mechanisms to implement spirituality in our life. But by themselves, they don't mean anything. You can go to church every day in your life. You can go to a temple. You can, you know, be practicing whatever religion you believe all the time. Yet, you may not be spiritual at all. You might not even connect with those teachings. How many people simply perform the acts, the responsibilities, the duties related to a certain philosophy, but yet they don't believe at all? 
they don't practice that in their life. They don't, those, those ideas don't percolate into their minds. And here comes the shocker. How many people are completely agnostic or even atheists or don't have any religion or have a version of religion, and yet in their life they practice compassion? They're compassionate. I've met many people that claim to me that they, you know, they were not you know, religious at all, they don't like religion for one reason or another, but yet they were very compassionate beings, practicing exactly the teachings that we talk about, right? In many times, the most fervent believers of certain religions are the ones that actually practice it the least, understand it the least. And that's exactly the teaching, exactly the teaching of Jesus 2,000 years ago, and we were trying to still, to this day, understand. Even in Spiritism, Spiritism is very clear about that, absolutely clear, because we try to remove the religious part of it. We try to remove the priesthood, we try to remove all the ceremonies, we were dealing with all those things. We removed everything from, from the religious component of Spiritism, so people don't get attached. Because we tend to be attached. And by the way, look at yourself. We all tend to attach because it's easier. We all tend to attach to ceremonies, to things, because they make the path easier. Like, for instance, if we're supposed to be patient, right, with people in our lives, if patience is where we are supposed to grow, right, because we're not there yet, is there a shortcut? What if I tell you, oh, uneasy, if you wear a white, if you wear white clothes all the time, that's going to make you more pure. I'm down to it. That's much easier than being patient to my kids, right? Wearing white all the time is much easier, right? I would totally get it. Isn't it tempting? Uneasy, if you wear white all the time, pure white, everything white from head to toe, you're going to be a more patient person. I'll take that. But is that... Is, it, is that something that sounds logical to you? But yet, that's how we do in many understandings of spirituality. We attach ourselves to the material things, to the crystals, to the, the things that actually are supposed to bring spirituality to us. But yet, here's the message. That's why the message of the Gospel is so difficult to practice. Right? And why true Christianity is so, you know, not in vogue today. Because true Christianity is the transformation inside of me. The only thing that makes me pure inside are my thoughts, my minds, and my actions that come out of my thoughts. Everything else is in outside. Everything else is not what can make me more evolved spiritually. And when we just are aware of that, if we learn that and just be aware, we can just be on guard to not allow those sort of little traps that here and there propel us to um, distract. I'm going to give you an example. We need a lot of rules to make groups function, right? Every time we have a group of people working together, we have rules, right? A time to start, a time to end, right? People have certain role, roles inside of the group, like some people do a certain task, other people do different tasks, right? But the group has a, uh, let's say the goal is to improve a community, right? When we start working together, how often the rules we come, come up for that group become so important that we are willing to fight over those rules instead of focusing on the goal of improving the community. How many times the rule becomes more important? That's to me. How many times I'm myself, when I look at myself, how many times I'm caught into a rule? Hey, you're supposed to be here at this time. Right? We are supposed to do this a certain way. You're supposed to behave a certain way. Right? Then it doesn't. And it ruins the whole experience. How many times we put the rules on top of the whole? 
that is part of the same problem. We lose the perspective. We sometimes look at the detail, at the thing that's out of place, by the way, and the rules are important. Don't get me wrong, the rules are important because every time we work together as a group, if we want to accomplish anything, even in a video game, if you have with your friends, everybody has a role. So we get to achieve a goal, right? But how many times the rule, the role, the rules become more important than the whole? And it's just balance. How many times we enforce the rules with rootlessness? Is that a spiritual teaching? Not at all. Actually, the major commandment of spirituality, the major commandment of Christianity is love thy neighbor as yourself. Not live by the rules and enforce people. And make sure everybody follows the rules. The rules are important as a tool. But what's really important is what I live in my life. And that's, I give you the first more obvious, more obvious problems with religion when people, but then there's the, my, the more minute for those that are already in the path, right? And I myself, I caught myself a lot in the rules. I caught myself a lot in the things that people should do here and there. And I lose completely, I myself, lose completely the perspective that, hey, hey, we're doing a much bigger work here. Sometimes I shouldn't focus, I shouldn't pay attention so much in the problem that is a problem, nobody's saying it's not, but it's minor compared to the place we're going. To the place we're going, right? So where are we going? We're going in a place where we live better together. So, but there's going to be bumps on the way. And I guess that's why we need the gospel, we need places like this to just find the strength and the courage and the wisdom right so we can navigate our lives and one day we're going to get it to a place where inside of us not outside but inside of us the light of spirituality the peace love compassion and all those things are going to manifest not in the words but in our thoughts in our hearts that's the goal and i think we're good for that we're good for for this conversation today thank you very much we're going to move to the passes um... Mm -hmm.